Okay, let's over start our lecture now. That lecture is about applying the we have studied different software development methodology, and now we will overview these methodology and we will go towards implementation of one of these methodology. We will select the, uh, the methodology that will suit our information system most from all of them. So then we will apply that methodology and we will evaluate the result in the end. So before going to select the methodology, we will go to overview all the common methodology that we have studied in previous lectures. So there are the most commonly used methodology in past times was waterfall model, but uh, the waterfall model was linear and uh, that is not a flexible model. So we will go towards iterative models in which we are delivered the whole project in small chunks. So that is our iterative model. So that is alternative to the rigid documentation in which we are documenting each and everything and our focus towards implementation is very was very less. So also, there is no room for change. Um, it's very difficult to make changes inside the whole document, uh, inside the whole project. So, iterative model give us the alternative for these problems. So, there are different multiple sprints, like we are dividing different uh, our model or our whole project into different modules that are the sprints, and we can implement that multiple sprints, and then we are testing these sprints separately and in the last we will merge all these sprints to achieve our whole goal so as such problems get fixed early on and the team stays within the project's goal so we are taking the feedback from our customer when we are delivering each sprint to that customer and customer can give the feedback about that chunk and we can fix the errors that are available in that part of the project so that is easy to overcome the problems or overcome the errors so we can easily focus on the goal or we can say that we are more close to our goal agile and scrum are two of the most popular methods that we are using as an iterative method in software development methodology the continuous model is inspired by the toyota production systems it is about minimizing break and ensuring flow between different phases of the developments. We are only dividing over problem into sub problems and we are developing each sub part of the problem one by one. And then in the last, we are integrating all these parts to achieve the whole goal. The goal of the continuous software development approach is to avoid wastage and improve the efficiency of various phases. Like we are delivering to our customer with different chunks of the time. So it is very easy to give the uh, customer a working model and uh, delivering different working models to customer one by one. So there are different uh, methods, methodologies are used in such iterative manner. There are most commonly used a methodology that we have studied and uh, in today's lecture we will go through we will briefly discuss these or we will overview all these methodology the first one was the waterfall model in which first of all we have to do the feasibility study we have to discuss either that model or that project is feasible to us according to our budget according to our need then we will go towards the next phase if the mod, uh, project is feasible to us then we will go gather the requirements and after gathering the requirements we will go towards the design after the designing like after the paperwork or after the documentation we are making the model of our project and then we are going towards the coding and the testing phase then we are integrating our model and then we are going towards the maintenance phase so that is a classical model in which we are following each step one by one that is very basic and very simple model we are only focusing on a single task at the same time. There is no parallel work and there is no overlapping stages are there. So that is very easy to implement that model. And uh, the beginners or less skilled persons can implement that model. But that we can consider that we are dividing over different working or over different 
steps in different cycle phase so the classical water form model divides the life cycle into set of phases and in each phase we have to give the older's output to the new phase so we can say that this model considered that the one phase can be started after the completion of the previous one because the output of the first phase will be the input of the second and the output of the second phase will be the input of the third and so on so we cannot switch towards the next stage until unless we have completed the previous one so we are focusing whenever we are uh, going towards a feasibility study we are only focusing on that either our project is feasible or not so there is no parallel working and there is not going back to the previous uh, phase so we are working in a order or in a linear method thus the development process can be considered as a sequential flow in the waterfall here the phases do not overlap with each other plus point was that it is easy to understand easy to implement so new developers or beginners can implement that model very easily all specification and deliverables are spelled out before the development started we are very sure about what we are going to develop we are not and there is no confusion in the requirements so we uh, the customer cannot demand for the change so there is no room for miscommunication as we have discussed each and everything before the designing phase reinforces good habits like define before the uh, define before design design before code so we are completing the each phase completely and then we are moving towards the next phase this model works well for the smaller projects and projects where requirements are well understood like um nowadays we can say that the commonly used models are the commonly used softwares are for journal stores so we are very sure about the requirements so we can implement such models in that areas because there is no ambiguity in the requirements are there is nothing new for the implementation so we can implement the previous things and we can implement these things very easily so we can say that we can apply that model in these areas it does not include now there are a lot of negative points in waterfall model the first one is that there is no room for the change so it does not include customer feedback when we are not taking the feedback from our customer we are not able to know either we are on the right track or on the wrong track so which increases the risk of the project can change direction from the targeted goal uh, sometimes we are not able to understand the complete requirements of the customer or the complete mindset of the customer so we can go far away from our goal so that is a highest risk in the last the customer will can reject over project so that will be a great loss for our company so uh, testing is only executed at the end of the development when we will develop all the things as we are not collecting any feedback from the customer so in the last we will deliver the working model to our customer and after the feedback we are going towards the um, fixing problem so that is very difficult to fix errors in the last the inflexibility of the waterfall model gives no room for changes making it not suitable for the complex projects like nowadays we are working on the new ideas that is uh, the age of artificial intelligence so that model is outdated and we cannot implement that model in new ideas or in new fields the team can spend too much time on the documentation each and every step must be written in the documentation that takes a lot of time we are working more on the documentation we are not working much on the implementation so we can use the waterfall model only when the project with the clearly defined scope when we are all sure about the requirements about the scope uh, uh, about the feedback each and everything so it is not suitable for the development that involves many unknowns we can apply uh, we cannot apply that model in new areas waterfall is ideal for the project with predictable outcomes and when you have a team of inexperienced developers the next one is agile software development in which we are dividing our problem into sub problems and then we are applying all these steps to the sub problems like first we will like if we are going towards any project 
like we are going towards the store keeping so we will first meet to our customer and we will discuss the requirements of warehouse then we will plan how we can maintain the warehouse then we will design the model for that then we will develop that model or we go towards the um, coding phase then we will go towards the testing phase then we will evaluate that model and after completion of that chunk we will go towards the next step so we can say that in agile we are working in a loop we are collecting the requirements then we are going towards the design develop test and then in the last we are going towards the deploy so agile methodology one of the most popular most of the companies are using the agile methodology nowadays it takes different approach from the conventional linear method like that is opposite to waterfall model it takes different approach from uh, agile focuses on how to satisfy users instead of emphasizes on the documentation and rigid procedures so we are taking continuous feedback from our customer with agile tasks are broken into short sprints like we can uh, as i told you that we are dividing over problem into sub problem so these are the sprints that can take one to four weeks of the completion life as i told you we are first uh, working on the storekeeping and then we are going how we can arrange over items then we are going how we can deal over customer how we can give the promotion so one by one we are completing our task so it's an iterative model that includes multiple test and the development progresses so we are developing one by one or we are and the development will be in the iterative manner developers continuously seek feedback from the customer and make changes to the software as we are developing part uh, um, from in the small parts so we can take the feedback from the customer and then we can make more effective new sub problem so uh, communication is priority in agile so particularly uh, between developers customer and the practically we are uh, arranging the meetings with our developers with our customer and with our users so there are less chances of failure so software has minimal defects due to the iterative effort in testing and fine tuning we are updating our more, um, project in each step clarity between team members during development thanks to frequent and transparent development we are also discussing each every step with our, within the team and also with our users so they are well familiar how to improve or how to fix the errors changes in the project requirements are easily addressed and work on with little impact on the time man so as in waterfall in the last we have to make a lot of changes and making these changes takes a lot of time and a lot of cost so uh, in agile we can replace that weakness and overall improvement on deliverables quality the team can sometimes lose focus due to the vast changes request like our customer is frequently demanding the change so sometimes our team can lose their interest in that project as they have to rework a lot of time we work the same task for uh, a lot of time so they can lose their interest documentation takes a back set in the agile as we know for the deployment and for the maintenance we need the documentation so we are not focusing on the documentation in agile so whenever we are we need over documentation or we want to make changes in the project afterward so that can create problems so agile focuses only on the discussions and feedbacks while can be too time consuming for the team sometimes the customer is troubling um, between the development phase so we have to arrange the meetings with the customer so sometimes that can take the working hours of over team due to its non structured approach agile requires experienced developers who can work independently like we are not sure about the time frame or we are not sure about how many changes can be demanded from the customer so that is not a proper structured approach so we need skills and uh, skilled and experienced persons the agile methodology is ideal where we need fast changing requirements whenever we are building any software for new phase or for new 
area we can use the agile methodology it works best to implement the additional ideas as you learn more about the market needs like we can start from the initial model and then we can update that model after knowing the feedback of our customer when we are uh, delivering that model or that project inside the market so we can judge the uh, what kind of changes are required after the response of our customers of course this assume that your team of developer is highly independent and comfortable working in the fast paced non structured environment now next one is lean development methodology in lean development methodology we are focusing how we can overcome the wastage like we are not uh, um working too much or uh, extra on extra features so there are different principles in lean development phase in which we are overcome we can over by adopting these principle we can overcome the waste so lean development is born out of the lean manufacturing principle by toyota it focusing on minimizing the wastage and increasing the productivity we are focusing on the effective model now we and uh, no we are uh, we are not focusing how it looks how it friendly we are only focusing how much the output is effective and correct so with the guiding principle developers avoid non productive activities while delivering quality in their task so whenever quality matters a lot we can use the lean development method it empowers teams to keep an open mind during the course of development and consider all factors before finalizing a decision before taking any decision we have to discuss these things with our coworkers as well as with the end users so with the lean methodology developer are tasked to identify bottlenecks that could hamper the process so uh, after the meetings we can understand either our customer is satisfied or not the goal is to establish an efficient system that works flawlessly like we are going to develop an error free system that is more efficient as compared to the other system the methodology also emphasizes human respect with the means communication is key to enhancing team collaboration so we are arranging the meetings time to time so the positive points of lean developments cut down the wastage in the project as redundant codes like we are not repeating any task unnecessary documentation we are only documenting the important task and repetitive task whenever we want you know, we are repeating any task we will omit that task from our project the overall cost of the development is reduced whenever we are only doing the limited work that is really important in the project we are not doing the extra work so the cost of the development automatically reduced time to market for software is shortened as we have uh, less work to do so the that will take less time and it will provide you more efficient mod um, output increase motivation among the team members as they are empowered with more decision making authority if they can take decision by their own but after discussing with the customer so that can be only successful if we have highly skilled developers that is not all the time easy to gather the multiple skilled person in, under a single roof so less skilled developers can overcome by the responsibility and lose a focus on the project they cannot handle that methodology in an effective way so detailed documentation is needed which places burden on the business analyst so a lot of documentation is required as we are emitting different things from the project so that can be suitable for the small project with the small budget and uh, we are minimizing the wastage and we are only focusing on the efficiency so the small team can work in a better way so lean development becomes less practical for the large products as they need a larger team to take on the task and we need that large team of the experienced and skilled person so that is really difficult to manage so that is not suitable for large projects the next one is prototype model in which we are making a dummy model and we are testing that dummy model and after when the customer will okay with that dummy model then we will go towards the development phase we are repeating that step multiple times there is no limit how many times we are 
updating over prototype or over dummy model. So in prototype, we are making a working model that is look like our original model but that is a prototype or uh, we can say that that is the copy of our whole project so prototype is then made available for customer testing evaluation and feedback if the customer is giving any negative feedback we have to make updation in that model and then we deliver that model again to the customer and then customer again test that model so based on the gathered feedback, the prototype goes through a number of iterations of the refinements. There is no limit how many times we can refine over dummy model 10 times, 20 times, 50 times. So that can take a lot of time. It considered satisf uh, satisfactory by the customer as we can adopt that model when we are not very sure about the requirements or we are not little bit known over requirements. So that will be a suitable model for that. The appeal of the prototype approach is hard evaluation that uncovers possible issues before actual development begins. So we are very sure about negative points, positive points as we are developing a working model that is not actual our project, but that is similar. So when we are uh, seeing anything in front of us, so that is easy to point out the errors or point out the issues. So this approach success lies not only the development team, but also how well they communicate with the customer in carrying out the test. So the responsibility of the developers are same uh, is much as um, uh, the customer is also involved in that. So if uh, they are not doing the testing in a proper way, we are not able to make an effective system. So it's also worth mentioning that the developers often bear the cost of building, uh, building prototype because at that time, the customer, if the customer is not satisfied, they will not hand over the project to us. So we have to bear the cost of that prototype. Then there are different positive points in that model. So we can say that the strength of that model is customer get to see the partial product early. So we can say that we are only implementing the basic things in that model. This ensures a greater level of, uh, of customer satisfaction and comfort as the customer is seeing the model before the actual project. New requirements can be easily accommodated as we are not implementing or we are not developing the whole model at once. We are only making a prototype of our whole software. So making changes in that model is easy as compared to the software. Missing functionality can be easily figured out. If anything is missing, we can figure out from the dummy model Errors can be detected much easier, thereby saving a lot of effort and cost. In the last, we have less rework to do. So we can say that we can find the errors at very beginning, even before the development. So that can reduce the cost beside enhancing the quality of the software. So that is also increasing the quality of our software as we are developing our error-free software. The developed prototype can be reused like we have developed the prototype for a departmental store so we can represent that prototype to over another customer and the, another customer can make changes in that prototype according to their needs so the plus point is that either we are um, bearing the cost of that prototype but there is also a edge we can reuse that prototype in future for any new customer or for any new person. The weakness is that as the customer is not satisfied and we are repeating the same thing again and again. So that can sometimes that can increase the cost of our project as well as we are investing money and we are investing over time. We are investing over hard work in that and uh, sometimes the customer in the end can reject our prototype and we have to we can lose that project so sometimes it can be costly and time consuming there may be too much variation in requirements each time the prototype is evaluated by the customer as we know we 
are giving a free hand to our customer so they can demand a lot of changes in the prototype so there can be a multi cycles before the final version of the prototype so poor documentation because we are continuously making changes in our project so making document of each and every step is very time consuming and we are not able to document each and every step so we can say that there is less documentation or no documentation whenever we are developing that prototype model so it is very difficult for developer to accommodate all the changes demanded by the customer sometimes the customer is so much demanding and accommodating their changes is very hard for our developers as we, um, different developers are working in multi projects so accommodating multiple changes is sometimes very hard there are uncertain uh, certain loops in that so we can say that we are not sure about the iteration how many times we have to make changes in the prototype so we are really uncertain about the time limit that would be required before the prototype is finally accepted by the customer after seeing any early prototype like we have um, built a prototype and that is not attractive for the customer so the customer sometimes lose their interest in the project so the customer might uh, be uh, dissatisfied with our project or with our software so sometimes we can lose over customers where we can use that model the prototype model should be used when the requirements of the product are not clearly understood or unstable like in marketing or in any field that are changing on daily basis like it field artificial intelligence field so we can apply these types of model in that fields it can be used if requirements are changing quickly this model can be successfully used for developing user interfaces like a lot of user interfaces are available in the in today's market and whenever we are trying to make a different and unique interface we can use that model and systems with the complex algorithms and the interfaces as in robotics and in artificial intelligence there is very complex algorithms so we can apply these type of models in that areas rad model we are using a built in systems in rad models so when we are we have less time so we can use that models and that can be designed uh, within the organization or out of the organizations as we are focusing on the time we have to deliver our project or our product in less time so sometimes they uh, the budget can be increased so whenever we are compromising on one thing we can achieve another thing it fo it focusing on it focus on getting products built in in much shorter time like if uh, by using the agile model we can develop the system in 4 months so by using rad development method we can achieve that same product in 2 months so that can reduce the time so that is a four step framework which is defending project requirements prototyping testing and implementation so again we are following the prototyping unlike linear models like waterfall model rad emphasizes on building prototypes with the given requirements the customer is giving the requirements in uh, like in prototype model we are not collecting the requirement from the customer but in that model we are collecting the requirements so we can make a better prototype and testing them out with the customer this is done through the multiple iteration until the customer is happy with the result same in the prototype we are again giving the uh, taking the feedback from our customer testing of the prototype results in the valuable feedback which helps to eliminate much of the product risk as we are making product in less time so we have to make a connection with our customer using rad leads to high chances of successful product release within the specified timeline rad often uses development tools that could automate and simplify the development process so we have to purchase the built in codes or built in products so reduce development time as we are using the built in things so 
that can reduce the time increase the reusability of components when we have the specific components we can reuse these components in further new projects increase and that can quick initial review occur like we are presenting the prototype to our customers so they can give the feedback at the initial stages encourage customer feedback as we are making a connection with our customer so they can give us the continuous feedback the weakness of rad model is that we have to make a strong team and individual performance of identifying business requirement each person have to work at their best level so we need highly skilled developers and designers as we are creating the models or we are developing the model high dependency on modeling skills like we are creating build in uh, system so we need a skilled modeling persons that can make build in built in co uh, codes in applicable to cheap projects as cost of the modeling and automated code generation is very high because we have to use different applications in which we can generate automated codes so that can increase the cost of over project so whenever the budget is not so much high we can we cannot apply these that model so rad model can be very successful when quick delivery of the product is needed for a customer so when we have short time we can use that model it is also best model to choose when there are going to changes made to prototype throughout the process before the final product is completed so in that model we are also working on the prototype so we can say that we can make changes very easily so rad should be used when there is a need to create a system that can be delivered in 2 or 3 months of the time as we discussed we can use that model when we have short time it should be used if there is high availability of designers for modeling and budget is high enough to afford their cost along with the cost of the automated code generating tools so whenever we are we can compromise on over budget we can use that model dynamic system development method that is a better version of rad model we can say that that is similar to rad model but we have make changes in rad model or we can say that that is a refined methodology of the rad model so that is also focusing on the project goal and over business needs so we are adding the additional features in that model it features four iterative phases like we are first we are going towards the feasibility first we have to check either the our project is feasible or not what is the market strategy or what will be the business benefits we can get from our project functional model we are not making the prototype we are going towards the functional model and we are making changes in that model we can say that we are not making a dummy model we are going towards the working model then we are going towards the design and build and in the last we are going towards the implementation like installation or uploading on the website throughout the process and users are greatly involved in providing the feedback as we are quickly making things so we have to involve our customer with us so we can get the feedback from our customer this reduces the risk of straying from the project goals and requirements as we are continuously communicating with our customer so we can go towards close we are really close to our goals the dynamic system model also features detailed documentation which is lacking in most agile framework so whenever we are not working on the prototype model we can make the documentation in each step so we can say that that is a plus point of dynamic system model as we are also going towards the documentation the plus points of that model is we are making a functional model not a dummy model so we can say that we can you explain uh, what is dynamic system model so we can continue from the positive points of that model can you tell me about the dynamic system model 
as i explained in the last uh, time uh, that was the last topic that we was discussing in our lecture so can you give the few points of that model so we can discuss the positive points of that model any one of you can give the answer what is dynamic system model because we are going we are repeating these models and we have discussed these models in our first class and uh, briefly and then we have discussed these models in detail in two or three classes so you must know what is dynamic system model because in the last we have to choose the best model from all of these model and when we are not sure about the working of each and every model how we can choose these models so we can easily understand the different models and in the last we can choose one of the best model so dynamic system model was the uh, refined model of rad in rad we are only focusing on the prototype and then we are uh, making the communication with our customer and according to that prototype we are developing our model so rad can be used when we have a short time but in that we are working on the prototype sometimes it takes a lot of cost so we can say that the dynamic system model is a refined version of rad model so in that we are not developing any prototype we are directly going towards the functional model or functional uh, software so that is the plus point of our uh, dynamic system model so we can say that it along with the iterative method in iterative method we are delivering in different phases or in different chunks so the iterative approach ensures the basic software functionality are delivered on time we are not only focusing on the time as well as we are focusing on the functional model of our software Develop developers have better control of the development timeline and the budget in as we discussed in rad the budget may be high but in the dynamic system model we are balancing over budget as well as we are focusing over time so we are developing over software in short time in sh and in short budget because that was the negative point of rad model because the low budget project cannot adopt that model necessary documentation is created throughout the development because we are not making a lot of changes in prototype model or whenever we are going towards the prototype or dummy model the customer is so much uh, giving so much demand about the changes so we are unable to make documentation as there are a lot of changes was doing so making any change in documentation form is very hard so in that model we can make the documentation establish communication between end users and the developer which keeps the team on the right track all so we are making communication with our customers and getting the feedback from them so we are going towards the right track now what can be the weaknesses or the negative points of our dynamic system model it can be quite expensive to execute although we are trying to minimize over budget but still that is a expensive model to implement because we have to do a lot of work in short time smaller teams have a hard time implementing this methodology because we have to do a lot of work so we have to increase the manpower whenever we want to increase the output we have uh, parallel in a parallel way we have to increase the manpower so the concept and implementation of the model are quite complex so we can say that that is not easy to manage the time and the cost at the same time so that model can sometimes becomes so complex so where we can use that model using the dynamic system model for the small organization is out of question if we have a lot of manpower so we can use that model otherwise we cannot use that model instead it is better fit for the large organizations it breaks down rigid processes into the smaller iterative parts and streamlines communication between different teams like we can divide multiple work in two or three teams so they can work at parallel mode and we can deliver over project in short time a feature driven development 
that is focusing on a small chunks like we are working a function at a time so we can say that we are developing over our model and from that model like we have listed down that in uh, our whole model we have to provide the accounts page we have to provide the login page we have to provide different pages so we have listed down the all functions are all the working of our model over project over product so from that we will make a feature list to do like in um, we can say that that is similar to to do the uh, task like we have to do this we have to do this we have to do this so we have to plan how we can arrange these features like which functions are more important then we are going uh, feature by feature we are going towards the design phase and the most important features will be developed first then we are focusing on the next features uh, sorry ma'am can i ask a question yes to understand better like this development is used like can you give an example of a common uh, organization that might use it like if if they can be able to use it like uh, feature driven yeah feature driven can be used like when we are sure about the functions like uh, we can say that uh, in universities we can use that feature driven development because we know which functionality is required like in departmental stores we can use these methodology uh, we can use that methodolo methodology because we are very uh, much familiar with over project which functionalities are lies inside over project whenever we are familiar with over features or with over qualities of our project we can adopt that model so in different fields we can use that model so we can okay ma'am okay in feature driven development we are also following the agile methodology all these models are related to ag agile methodology so we can say that these are the iterative methods so the goal is simple that we have to make a list of features so we are not only working on a single feature but we are making a little bit chunks like we can say that we are making a shortest problem from over whole problem so we can say that the now the parts are so much uh, smaller in size so fdd is sometimes mistaken as focusing on each of the software feature that is not same like that only we are dividing the problem into sub problems but the sub problems has a small size so what feature driven development does is breaking down development activities into feature list on the overall model although we are dividing over problem into feature list but we are combining two or three features and then we are going towards the development phase for each of the features developers go through an iteration of planning designing and building so whenever we whenever we are dividing uh, developing anything we have to plan that we have to design that and then we have to go towards build like we have to go towards the coding phase typically a feature should not longer than 2 weeks like in other methodologies we said that the different sprints chunks can take 3 to 4 weeks or 4 to 5 weeks but in that we are reducing the size of over sub component of our whole model so we can say that that can take only 2 weeks so we can deliver in a fast manner the outcome of feature driven is quick impactful results because when we are working on a small size problem the there can be some uh, uh, there can be less errors in that model so we can say that the outcome of that is more quick and impactful for each of the activity that is listed in the features this approach is meant for larger teams and the information is communicated through the detailed documentation because we are dividing over whole functions in different parts so we have to make documentation before we are going towards the design phase so the plus points are that gives the team a very good understanding of the project scope and context like in waterfall model we must be know what are we uh, what we are going to develop in that model we are also have idea what things we are going to work on requires fewer meetings 
because we are uh, we know what are the features on which we are going to work so we have to consume less time in the meetings the client is the end user so we are delivering each and every feature to our customer to end user so they can easily accept or reject over that um, that part of our whole problem works well with the large scale long term or ongoing projects like some projects goes up to two years three years like in research areas we can adopt or we have to work on that project so in that areas we can use that project the five wells defined step make it easier for new team members or new hires to come up to speed on the project very quickly only we have to inform the new members on which task now we are going to working so it is very easy to make or add new person in your team break features set into smaller chunks and regular iterative releases like after two weeks we are delivering the next chunk to our customer which makes it easier to track and fix the coding errors as we have less code for testing so making changes in that code and fixing errors is much easier reduce risk and allow you to make a quick turn around to meet your client's need as or if uh, we are delivering multiple things to our client and the client can make it a usable model for their organizations what is the drawbacks of that that is not ideal for the small projects and does not work for the project where there is only one developer because it is hard for one or very few people to take on the various roles without help although that is very ideal project for uh, methodology for different projects but as in uh, rad model uh, as in dynamic system model we have to manage skilled person and we have to manage a lot of manpower so that is sometimes very hard to manage multiple peoples at the same time so they uh, sometimes these models are very difficult to implement provides no written documentation to client although there is a lot of document communication among team members during the project development cycles as before the development we are making the document but during developing phase we are not making any document so in the last we are unable to deliver any documentation to over clients therefore the client is not able to get a proof of their own software whenever they um, they are going towards another organization they have no documentation so they uh, don't know what things are available inside their project emphasizes individual code ownership instead of shared team ownership so we are not focusing on the single team different persons are using different features list and they are doing in a uh, working in a parallel environment where we can use it if you are in big corporation or working on a large scale software project fdd might be right for your project as we discussed we need skilled person and a huge manpower for implementation of that model you may want to consider using fdd methodology if your project go, grows too large and complex for smaller scrum teams to efficiently handle the amount of the work if we, the chunks are like our functionality is so much complex and we are uh, our developers are facing difficulty in implementing that scrums are that functionality we can divide that scrum into smaller pieces so our developers can develop these things in a easy way the agile feature driven methodology is well suited for long term projects that continuously changes and add features in regular predictable iteration as we are working according to our feature so adding new functionality in our software is easy now scrum development in that we have three teams like we have a person or a team that is communicating with the customer a team that is clear, uh, creating the backlog that is known as the scrum 